Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 196, Emperor Yongla. In the morning of the second day, Shen Miao would be following with Zi Jingxing to the palace to see Emperor Yongla. Because this was the first meeting, she had to wear the official clothes of the grade of what a Wang Bi of first grade should wear. When Zi Jingxing came out, Shen Miao could not help but be startled. Great Liang's and Ming Qi's court attires were definitely different. Ming Qi's style geared towards delicate and beauty while Great Liang geared towards noble bearing. Zi Jingxing wore a purple gold robe with embroidered kylin and the official hat and green agate belt. It looked extremely imposing. The usual frivolous appearance was shed off and now he appeared to be somewhat unapproachable. Shen Miao had a meal with him before boarding the carriage to the palace. Because of yesterday's matters, Shen Miao had felt somewhat uncomfortable but Zi Jingxing seemed to be very satisfied with her appearance and when they were in the carriage, he mentioned it in a vile manner. Shen Miao thought that this person really had no scruples because he was in Great Liang but because it was the first time meeting Emperor Yongle, her heart was somewhat heavy but because of Zi Jingxing's teasing, it became much more relaxed. The residence of Prince Ruai of first rank was not far from the palace and one did not know if this was done deliberately by Zi Jingxing. When the guards of the palace saw Zi Jingxing, they released their carriage immediately. As Jing's and Gu Yu were Shen Miao first ranking maids, they followed behind Shen Miao but dared not even breath loudly and walked carefully, fearing that any discourteous action would bring trouble for Shen Miao. The palace maids and eunuchs of Great Liang's imperial palace were all doing their work with their heads lowered but when Shen Miao walked past, she could feel some inquiring gazes on her. Since it was her first time in the Imperial Palace of Great Liang, perhaps everyone was talking about what kind of wife did Zi Jingxing marry. The commoners were tolerant of her but people with official positions were different. In addition, Zi Jingxing had a sensitive identity and if Shen Miao did not guess incorrectly, the position of the consort of Prince Ruai was one that a lot of people would fight for. Her every move and action were not only representing that she was Ruai Wangpi but also represent the demeanor of the Shen family of Ming Qi. Thinking as so, Shen Miao could not help but straighten her back even more and look more dignified. Unconsciously she had brought out the bearing of her past lifetime as an empress. Zi Jingxing noticed her action and smiled meaningfully before whispering to her ears. No need to be this nervous. You are almost as comparable as the Empress. Shen Miao glared at him. What kind of time this was? Zi Jingxing was still this cheeky. There were many eyes and ears in the palace and most likely there were Emperor Yongle's people. If Zi Jingxing's words were carried into the ears of Emperor Yongle, would she be given a name of a beauty who brings disaster? Thinking of the being a virtuous and respectable Empress in the past lifetime. She had not been an troublesome and disastrous beauty before. Just as she was thinking about it, Zi Jingxing took her hand and Shen Miao quickly struggled to break free. Someone will see. What would be the matter if someone sees? Zi Jingxing was not happy. Do one need others agreement for this prince to hold Wang Bi's hand? Shen Miao wanted to say something when she saw that she had walked to a side hall with Zi Jingxing and there was a fat eunuch who stood outside the door. When he saw both of them, he said, Greetings to your highness prince of first rank, his majesty and her ladyship have been waiting for a long time. One did not know if it was intentional or not but he did not greet Shen Miao. Dang gong gong. This is this prince's beloved wife. Zi Jingxing did not let this matter pass and push Shen Miao forward. Why are you not greeting? Shen Miao rolled her eyes at Zi Jingxing in her heart. This Dang Gong Gong apparently got an order from his master to treat her as such. Other than Emperor Yang Le, which other master could there be? Even if this was Emperor Yang Le's thoughts, not only Zi Jingxing not go along with others. He deliberately brought it out. Was he here today for a quarrel? Dang Gong Gong's smile remained unchanged and immediately changed his tune and said to Shen Miao, So it is your ladyship Wang Bi. This servant did not have eyes. May your ladyship Wang Bi forgive oneself. Shen Miao was different with Zi Jingxing. She smiled gently. It is of no problems. Zi Jingxing swept a look at Dang Gong Gong. Fine. Imperial older brother is not satisfied with me like this then why call me to come over? 
He then smiled, if it was not Wang Bi that persuaded me today, who want to come over to see him? Deng Gong Gong and Shen Miao. Shen Miao pulled his sleeves and Xi Jing Xing said, what is there to be afraid? Being the matriarch of my residence of Prince Ruai of first rank, one do not need to be afraid of others. Don't worry, whoever bullies you, this husband will take it out for you. His voice was not concealed or lowered, making the responsive and smart Deng Gong Gong unable to hide the awkwardness. Suddenly a cough was heard from the main hall and Deng Gong Gong was sharp and said, May your highness prince of first rank and your ladyship Wang F follow this one in. Shen Miao was pulled by Xi Jing Xing and followed in. She lowered her head all the way and did not raise her head. It was the first encounter and one would follow all propriety. Shen Miao knew that Emperor Yang Le did not like her much and thus was not willing to make any mistakes in these details and could only be perfect. She was only able to see the smooth marble on the floor that was engraved with cloud patterns and the top was covered with a soft wool blanket. Chen Di greets imperial older brother. Zi Jing Xing said lazily and even his gestures were barely passable. Zi Jing Xing could be that impudent but Shen Miao could not. However she did not go down on her knees and bend her back to greet. Chen Fu greets your majesty. You are Shen Miao? After a while, a majestic low voice rang out, lift up the head. Shen Miao lifted her head up. The age of the male that was sitting on the highest seat was not considered too old and looked like he was in his thirties. His brows and eyes were sharp, his nose was high and lips thin. He looked seven to eight tenths similar to Zi Jing Xing. However Zi Jing Xing's features were soft while his expression was sharp thus the beauty and handsomeness ratio was extremely well blended. The middle aged male in front, most likely due to the high position that he was sitting for a long time, did not have any gentle bearing and compared to Zi Jing Xing's stubbornness, he was even more upright. His had a deep gaze that when looking at another, it would be somewhat cold as if one could see through to the bottom on one's heart. Although these two brothers looked similar in appearance and were all elegant and noble, their temperament were as different as the North and South. Zi Jing Xing looked like a gentleman who went around to play and had a type of cynical laziness in dealing with everything but this person was extremely rigorous to oneself and would not let oneself off in any moment. Shen Miao's heart felt very strange. She had not thought that the wise Emperor Yongle throughout the ages would have such young appearance and also looked so handsome. It was very different from a head of white hair than she had imagined to be. When she was sizing Emperor Yongle, Emperor Yongle was also sizing her up. Emperor Yongle's gaze was very sharp and there was also a sense of pressure. He had a cold look on his face, as if he would burst in fury the next moment. If it was an ordinary female that he was sizing up, one feared that she would be so scared that one cried. However Shen Miao was different from ordinary young ladies. When she was facing Fu Ziyu Yi before, Fu Ziyu Yi's cold expression to her was much more colder. Seeing that she still remained calm, a sharp gaze flashed in Emperor Yang Le's eyes but Xi Jing Xing lazy voice was heard in the main hall, has Imperial older brother seen enough? If one look longer, Chen Di will feel uncomfortable. Shen Miao was startled and was unable to hide it in her heart. She had always guessed what was the relationship between Zi Jing Xing and Emperor Yang Le would be like and was also faintly aware that these pair of brothers were more sincere than the brothers in Ming Qi's imperial family but she had not expect that Zi Jing Xing would dare to say such things to Emperor Yang Le. Moreover Emperor Yang Le did not seem to be angry at all. In the imperial family, there were many rules and regulation and each person's status was subtle thus it was just impossible to have a relation like ordinary brothers. It was already a luxury that brothers were not fighting and were on friendly terms. Moreover Zi Jing Xing was in Ming Qi for so many years but currently it looked like he was living with Emperor Yang Le since young. Jing Xing, Ben Gong will also be angry with your words. A laughing voice was heard and Shen Miao's gaze landed on the female by Emperor Yang Le's side. One had thought that this person should be Emperor Yang Le's wife, 
Empress Zhanda of Great Liang. Empress Zhanda looked younger than Emperor Yongle and she was wearing a pomelo green embroidered robes with a wide belt. This dressing was considered very plain and simple but she had a dignified appearance and with one look one could tell she was a female who was well educated by a large family and was intelligent and calm. She was sitting by Emperor Yongle's side smiling towards Zi Jingxing. Shen Miao remembered that Zi Jingxing once praised Empress Zhanda. There were not many female that Zi Jingxing would praise as he was so critical and for Empress Zhanda to become of them, there naturally be something special. Even if Zi Jingxing not mentioning it, Shen Miao would still have a good impression of Empress Zhanda because she had a graceful and calm bearing that even Shen Miao, who was an empress in her past lifetime, would feel inferior and ashamed. Jing Xing's wife, the young lady of the Shen family in Mingqi. Empress Zhanda nodded her head and smiled warmly. Ben Gong has always be curious what kind of young lady would make Jing Xing curb his heart. Now upon looking, one understood. Jing Xing has good eyes. Shen Miao repeatedly reply that she didn't dare. Empress Zhanda's praises however made Emperor Yongle dissatisfied. He glared at Empress Zhanda and seemed to be somewhat unhappy but he only said solemnly, Ming Qi's and Great Liang's rules and regulations are different. Since you have married and become Great Liang's people, rules and regulation of Great Liang must be kept. Imperial older brother. Zi Jingxing interrupted his words. This Chen Di will naturally teach the rules and regulation. If one is unable to teach, Imperial older brother need not have to worry. The people of the residence of Prince Ruai of first rank will be looked after by Chen Di. It is better for Imperial older brother to manage your own matters. Zi Jingxing protected Shen Miao to this level and did not even give Emperor Yongle any face in front of Shen Miao at all. Emperor Yongle was finally angered and said, You protect your wife this much? And don't even allow Zen to say a single word? Why not Zen give you this position to sit? Forget about it. Zi Jingxing waved his hands without any care, keep this position for yourself as Chen Di is not interested. It is just that it was so difficult for Chen Di to marry a young lady and if you intervene again and one's wife run away, what should Chen Di do, be lonely for the rest of one's life? Shen Miao If Zi Jingxing were brothers with Fu Ziyu Yi and spoke to Fu Ziyu Yi those words, one feared that he would be dead seven to eight times. Emperor Yongle stood up and looked at Shen Miao. That long was filled with threats before he turned around and left with a brush of his sleeves. After walking halfway and seeing that Zi Jingxing was still standing by Shen Miao's side and had no intention to follow, he was suddenly angry again. Roll over to Zen here. Zi Jingjing was helpless about it and said to Empress Zhanda, Imperial Sao, will Han Zhao Zhao over to you. Then he said to Shen Miao, after matters are settled, I will pick you up. After Zi Jingxing and Emperor Yongle left, Empress Zhanda then smiled gently and stood up to walk over to Shen Miao. The room is rather stuffy. Since you have not come to the Imperial Palace of Great Liang, Ben Gong will bring you around. Shen Miao quickly complied. Empress Zhanda was a good person and seemed not to put on any air of an empress. Both of them went to the imperial gardens to stroll around and on the way there, Empress Zhanda asked if she was used to Long Yi. The conversation was intimate like talking to one's eldest sister, which made one's heart feel smooth. Ever since Jing Xing returned to Long Yi, Ben Gong had never seen him being interested in any young ladies. One had thought that most likely it was not possible for him to like any young lady and did not think that he would marry a wife in Ming Qi, even though it was somewhat surprising, but one's heart was very comforted. Otherwise Ben Gong would really worry that he would not find a young lady for his entire lifetime and be alone. When Shen Miao heard those words, she smiled and said, how could the prince of first rank be alone? When he was young in Mingqi, there were many young ladies that liked him so no matter what he would not be alone. Empress Zhanda shook his head with a smile, then have you seen him being particularly good to anyone? Shen Miao was startled. Empress Zhanda then carried on herself, 
Jiang Xing and the Emperor looked like different people but in fact both brothers are the same. The Emperor looked cold on the surface and his temperament is also cold. Jiang Xing looked warm and easy to talk to but his temperament is also cold. Most likely they themselves are clear that their identities are special and should not think about things that one should not think of. She looked at Shen Miao with a smile. One thinks that Jing Xing had told you about his secret so this is not a secret. That kind of child had to hide himself and live like this since young. Be it hiding one's identity or emotions, one's self-control had been gradually developed but one's heart also hardened. This is a good thing to the imperial family but to himself. It was not a good thing. Ben Gong had always thought that if Ging Xing was the same as the Emperor then it would be too unfair. It was fortunate that he was luckier than the Emperor and met you. Shin Miao listened to Empress Xionda's words and her heart was somewhat hesitant. In the short time of interacting with Empress Xionda, Empress Xionda had a personality that one would like on first look. Unlike the usual deliberate fawning, Empress Xionda was those quiet ones that would make others feel very comfortable. She seemed to live genuinely and not like a female in the inner palace. But what was the meaning that she said that Zi Jingxing was luckier than Emperor Yongle's fortune? This was too difficult to answer thus Shen Miao could only listen quietly without speaking. His Majesty deeply entrusts Jingxing. Empress Xionda said. He hopes that Jing Xing can live comfortably and happy but does not hope that Jing Xing would change his original aspiration because of greed and comfort. His Majesty lived in hardship so if His Majesty hurt you because of this matter, you mustn't blame him. Xin Miao smiled gently. Chen Fu is not qualified to place any blame to the decision of His Majesty. She looked at Empress Xionda, is it that your ladyship have something to say to Chen Fu? Empress Xionda smiled before sighing, just now when one first saw you, Ben Gong felt a familiar feeling in you. You are a smart young lady and Ben Gong know that it is easy for a smart person to see something fixated. If you cannot resolve it, then the knot in one's heart cannot be untied. Shin Miao slightly frowned. She faintly felt that there was another meaning to Empress Xionda's words. His Majesty viewed Jing Xing very important and with regards to Jing Xing marrying, even though His Majesty agreed, one's heart is after all not happy. Jing Xing naturally have ways to resist His Majesty's decisions but you are different. You are a young lady of Ming Qi's and in Great Liang, there would be many places that are restricted. Empress Xionda said, Ben Gong like you a lot but Ben Gong is His Majesty's wife and Ben Gong cannot change His Majesty decision and can only hope that you will feel comfortable. Shin Miao said, what is His Majesty going to do? Just as Empress Xionda was about to speak, a charming female voice came from behind, older sister has such good spirits today and stroll in the imperial gardens. Shen Miao and Empress Xionda turned their heads together and saw that from the other end of the small hallway, some palace people were supporting a female dress in palace clothes over. This female was wearing a silver red and purple robe with agate jade on her head. It was the beginning of spring but she dressed more beautiful that spring. As she walked nearer, one discovered that this female had a beautiful face but one did not know if it was this dressing made her seem slightly impetuous. She came over enchanted and greeted Empress Xionda but there was a careless appearance, seeming not putting Empress Xionda in her eyes. Oh, so it is younger sister consort Jing. Empress Xionda said blandly. Shin Miao was thinking in her heart that this consort Jing looked like she was in her early twenties and could be at the position of a consort. It was either her family was extremely prominent or was extremely favored. However Shen Miao felt that compared with Empress Xionda, other than being younger and beautiful, this consort Jing seemed to be inferior to Empress Xionda and one was unable to see what other points were there that was worthy of Emperor Yongle's favor. That consort Jing seemed to only notice Shen Miao then and asked, this person is unfamiliar. Which Furin is this? Currently Shen Miao had already dressed as a married female and combed a married female's hairstyle. Thus even though her face was delicate, one would not consider her as an unmarried young lady of an official. This is the Furin of Prince Ruai of first rank, Ruai Wang. 
Empress Xiangde did not seem to want to introduce Shen Mi out to Consort Jing and thus her words were simple. When the words were spoken, Consort Jing's expression changed. When she heard those words, she called out in astonishment, Ruai Wangpi. Then she looked up and down of Shen Mi out to size her up. It was different from Emperor Yang Le's careful examination gaze, not to mention different from the kind-hearted observation from Empress Xiangde. This person's gaze was extremely rude, as if she was sizing some plaything. After finish looking, she snorted and spoke somewhat ill-intentioned. One had initially thought that what kind of great national beauty would one be that it made Prince Ruai of first rank marry back to Great Liang despite the far distance. Now from this look. She smiled harshly, it is most likely my eyesight is not good and unable to see anything special. Shen Miao did not know how was she embroiled with this one and so cautious that she was not willing to speak. Empress Xiangde's expression was however somewhat cold. The people that Consort Jing sees as special are even lesser than less. Shen Miao was somewhat surprised that Empress Xiangde would be furious at Consort Jing for her and felt that this kind of Empress Xiangde was similar to Emperor Yongle. It was just that the sarcastic words that Empress Xiangde spoke was not effective and one did not know if Consort Jing understood it or not. Consort Jing looked at Shen Miao and suddenly smiled. It seemed that older sister has good relations with Ruai Wangpi and would stroll around the gardens together. One do not know what kind of private words did one have with Ruai Wangpi. After all things have to be said since it is Ruai Wangpi of first rank's first time here and there must be many things that one do not know. Shen Miao looked at Consort Jing. Consort Jing smirked. One think is so. His Highness Prince Ruai is busy very day so where would there be time to speak to Ruai Wangpi about matters of Great Liang? Speaking of which, some days ago, my fourth younger sister was still asking when His Highness Prince Ruai would be returning. She said that she had learned a song and wanted His Highness Prince Ruai to give her some pointers. Empress Xianda said angrily, Consort Jing. Shen Miao suddenly came on to realization in her heart. She was wondering why Consort Jing would target her for no rhyme or reason. So this was like that. Thinking of when Zi Jing Xing was in Mingqi, he was well liked by young ladies and now in Great Liang, with the identity of Prince Ruai. There would be even more aureole and swallows flying around. She only reached here for a moment and was already hated by others. Consort Jing was smiling as she looked at Shen Miao. If Ruai Wangpi is bored, one can invite my fourth younger sister over to the residence. My fourth younger sister has always liked to make friends and if Ruai Wangpi has nothing to do, it is good to have more sisters. More sisters? Shen Miao heart laughed coldly. More like having more sisters in the inner courtyard. One had thought of dealing with it lightly but her eyes landed on the white jade thumb ring that Zi Jingxing gave it to her and suddenly Shen Miao changed her mind. She smiled. One fear that this would not work. Consort Jing was startled and Empress Xianda was also stunned seemingly did not think that Shen Miao would say so. His Highness has handed over everything of the residence of Prince Ruai over to me to manage, from the big matters of the common funds to small matters like revenue from shops, servants and guards, the invitations from those who come over. One is too busy with matters inside and outside that one fear that there is no time to entertain guests. Shen Miao smiled warmly and seemed to be a little apologetic. Since one come over for the first time and His Highness trust this Chen Fu, Chen Fu dared not let His Highness down. If fourth young lady likes, one can look for His Highness for a meet. Chen Fu will not have time. These words made Consort Jing dumb and speechless but a fire was burning in her heart. Shen Miao's words looked warm and mild and spoke that she did not have time to accompany guest but in fact it was just a brinked show. Look at how Prince Ruai of first rank dote on her that he handed all matters of the residence of Prince Ruai of first rank to Shen Miao to manage. This was naturally because there was only Shen Miao the only mistress in the prince residence so one would dote on one person but there was no need to even pass all the management of shops, 
maids and guards over to her right, it was better to say that Ruai Wangpi of first rank also managed Prince Ruai. Ruai Wangpi of first rank had changed the way of showing how high her position was in the prince residence. Xin Miao was busy with official matters and also secretly trampled on consort Jing's fourth younger sister indicated that she had nothing to do all day and ran around to other families' residents to cause trouble. This was not considered a good thing. The corner of Empress Zhanda's lips slightly rose. Consort Jing was so angry that the color of her face turned green. Originally Shen Miao was not one who would be enemies of others especially when she was unfamiliar with the people and matters here. It was just that Consort Jing had provoked the anger in her heart. If she did not push back viciously, in the future everyone would be stepping on her head. With the correct conditions of heavens, timing, interest and people, and with Zi Jingxing supporting her, if she were to let it go, she would be a fool. Xin Miao smiled gently. One heard that a kind-hearted person would always feel the same. For your ladyship consort Jing to be so worried of Chen Fu's loneliness and want to look for some sisters to accompany Chen Fu, one think that one felt the same. Most likely your ladyship consort Jing has also times when one is lonely. Why not in the future look for a few more sisters to come to the palace to sit? Like that your ladyship consort Jing would be joyous. Consort Jing was so angry that she almost could not breath. Shen Miao's words was saying that consort Jing let Shen Miao invite her fourth younger sister to the residence for a sit and wanted to increase the number of sisters in the inner courtyard. Shen Miao was also a smart person and immediately returned it back to let consort Jing add a few more sisters in the palace. Consort Jing gritted her teeth with hate. Su was currently at her prime but it has been for a number of years. There were so many female candidates that entered the palace every year and the favor of a monarch was the most precious. If there were a few sisters that could cause cities and countries to fall, then, where could she stand? This Ruai Wangpi's mouth was really sharp. Empress Zhanda however laughed. Since younger sister consort Jing is lonely, then it is easy to handle. Tomorrow I will mention this to his majesty that these days the palace is somewhat deserted and it is time to add a few more new sisters. Consort Jing was quickly anxious not lonely. I am not lonely. Empress Zhanda's position of the Empress was very stable and naturally it would not matter to her to add in a few sisters but Consort Jing was at the period where she was most favored thus she feared that the favor would be shared. Shen Miao was grateful to Empress Zhanda for pushing the boat along. Even though Empress Zhanda only spoke about it, she said seriously, your ladyship Consort Jing must not deny it. Since one cares for Chen Fu, Chen Fu should also return a peach with a plum. She said it like Consort Jing should instead thank her. Kai. From not far away, a chuckle was heard. A few people turned back to look and saw Emperor Yongle and Zi Jingxing standing at the back of the garden from don't know when, because they were concealed by the trees. No one discovered their figures and one did not know how much they have heard. Emperor Yongle looked indifferent and one was unable to see any anger or joy as he said, Prince Ruai of first rank, this wife of yours really have a set of fangs. It was at the end somewhat unpleasant so one thought that the deliberate teasing of Consort Jing by Shen Miao and Empress Xianda were all heard. Consort Jing ran towards Emperor Yongle in grievance. Your Majesty. Zi Jingxing walked over and pat Shen Miao's head, as if to praising that white tiger in his inner courtyard and said with great please, Zhao Zhao is really sensible and know how to be actively compassionate towards others. He then swept a glance at Emperor Yongle, since Consort Jing wants to have sisters then Imperial older brother should go along with it. It is not that the palace cannot afford to raise an idler. When Consort Jing heard it, her heart was anxious and panicking. She bit her lips and looked towards Emperor Yongle with a pitiful appearance. Shin Miao wanted to laugh. Consort Jing came over to bear her fangs and brandish her claws but she did not have brains. Now it seemed that it was them that joined hands to bully Consort Jing. One did not know why did Emperor Yongle support this kind of female. Emperor Yongle said, since when do you want to manage Zen's matter? Is an imperial older brother's consort is also managing this Chen Dai's consort?
Zi Jingxing raised his eyebrows and looked at Consort Jing. He had a beautiful and handsome appearance and would often smile idly. The females in the palace liked this appearance of his but they all knew deep in their hearts that this Prince Ruai of first rank could not be provoked. Her eyes were sharp and his tone of voice was clam but one could not help but feel cold. He said, Consort Jing, are you sure you want this Prince to listen to your fourth younger sister's song? Consort Jing shivered. 